Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. This is the course for SQB 7009, which is based in statistics. And uh, I'm Dr. Adriana. And uh, so for this course, um, yeah, you can actually get all the information I'm going to share with you today on Spectrum. So please go and uh, download the info and also the lecture materials and maybe later the tutorial questions from Spectrum, right? And also please fill in the entry survey for this course. And for the attendance, also please click on the uh, class attendance on Spectrum. Okay, there's a section where you have class attendance. So please record your own attendance there on Spectrum. Okay, right. So for uh, this course, the important part that I want to share with you is actually the course outcome, course learning outcome, right? So by the end of the course, right, you are expected to obtain the course learning outcome. So which is first you have to know about the posterior distribution when given the prior right and you have to develop algorithms to estimate the parameters okay so this means that we're going to use r later okay so we'll be go, uh, we'll be doing a bit of r for this course um when you want to do the algorithms and this is also part of the your assessment okay so we're going to see discuss it later right and we're going to look at how we're going to uh, choose the prior distribution okay and uh, we want to apply the Bayesian approach to practical problems. So this is also going to be part of your assessment. Okay, and uh, you should know that the continu continuous assessment is 50% and we have the final exam is uh, 50%. Okay, and so that is the pro forma. So you can also obtain that on spectrum which I have shared before already. Okay, so okay, so for this course, right, we can see that uh, our references are actually just a, a few references, so you can actually use a few references, but the main one I'm going to be used is the number one and number two. Okay, and number two, the Gelman, uh, Carlin, and so etc. is actually a, a book that you can obtain from the library. Right, I think you can also continue online. Okay, and this book has uh, also uh, quite a lot of the R uh, functions, right, that you can uh, ref use as a reference. Okay, so we're going to have the lecture, tutorial, and hands on because there's some uh, lab uh, classes we're going to be involving R. Okay, okay, then so. To re-emphasize, my name is Dr. Adriana, right? So if anything, you can email me uh, at my email address. Okay, so technically we have a two-hour lecture and one-hour tutorial, but of course the tutorial will only start on week three. Okay, and today we might not use the whole of the three hours um, because it's just an introduction. So it depends on how long it takes, okay, uh, for our class today. Right, and uh, so we're going to start at six, and during the Ramadan, right, uh, there might be a longer break. So we're going to have a break around seven thirty, right, and uh, during uh, during Ramadan in April, there might be a longer break because you know for breaking fast and also for praying. Okay, so we might take around half an hour, forty five minutes for later on for break. Okay, so for our assessment for this course, right, this is going to be uh, three assessments for the continuous assessment and there's one final exam. Okay, the final exam is probably going to follow the format, which is like uh, two hours exam. Okay, and for our uh, assessment, it's going to be a test, which is 10%. And then you have uh, assignment one, which is an individual assignment, which is 15%. And you have assignment two, which is your group assignment, which is 25%. So for the group assignment, you have a report and uh, you have to do presentation. Okay, and I think because uh, there are too many students 
uh, in this uh, it's a bit uh, uh, quite a bit. So what I'm going to do probably is going to I'm going to ask you to submit a video for your presentation. Okay. So anyway, so for the test, um, it's a written test, right? And for the assignment one, it's going to be a computer based as, uh, assignment, which is based on R. Okay. So if you look at the planning, right? of the schedule. So you can see that the test is going to be around week seven. Okay, depending actually. So I'm thinking week seven, such so a week six or week seven. Okay, and then we have our assignment one after the break or assignment one. So you're going to have, uh, this is going to be based on the R. Okay, and then you're going to have uh, assignment two. Okay, so assignment two is your group uh, assignment, right? And uh, and so assignment one probably will take around one to two weeks. And then we have assignment two, which, which you should submit by week 14. Okay, right. So that is the, and, uh, and, and uh, you can see that uh, this is the topics that we're going to cover for our course. Right, so we have the computer class and we have some theoretical, and uh, we also have the tutorials. Okay, and uh, the topics that I'm going to cover is given here in the list, right? And so you can see the planning, right? And so by so by actually by uh, week uh, ten, right? We will finish most of the topics but apart from the tutorials, but then we're going to do the assignment. So the, it's going to be a group assignment. So it's going to be like hands-on uh, for you to do um, group discussion from, from week 11 to week 13. Okay, right. So that is the planning. Uh, but of course, depending on if, well, well, this is planning, but it depends on whatever happens during the semester. Okay, so do you have any questions regarding the planning or the assessment class? Any question? No? Okay, right. So do you have uh, any questions? Just take note of the important weeks, right, for the assessment, okay? But for the final exam, that one depends on the uh, the coordinator or in the setting by the exam session. Okay, right. Okay, so then the, that is just a short introduction to our course. Okay, and so then we're going to look at the... Okay, so for... Chapter one, the one that I've okay, I already uh, submitted, uh, I, mean, I already uploaded on Spectrum. Okay, this is actually just a summary of things that will be covered or will be used during our course. Okay, so the review here, the review part here, um, right? The review part here, I'm not going to teach you. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly tell you or briefly share with you the things that you should know, right? And these are actually the basic things, right, that you should know and we're going to, going to use in our course. Okay, so if you're not familiar with them, then you have to pick them up, okay, yourself, right? So I'm going to go over briefly. Uh, so first, before we do that, Okay, so we're going to uh, see like uh, some introduction. Okay, um, so Bayesian, um, they, well, I'm not really a Bayesian, but yeah, I teach Bayesian, right? So the Bayesian is actually called the, the things that we learn or the, the things that we use is as a frequentist. 
Okay, because it's a frequency, it's based on the idea of repeated sampling, right? And we, we it's called frequencies because, you know, we do repeated sampling and we base our draw conclusion based on our source of data. Okay, so when they do base and statistic, what happens here, there is actually they have expressed, um, they have a alternative approach, right? So we can have the data, but we can also combine the data with the data that we observe with some other knowledge. For example, we can have prior knowledge about our what we expect to see, and we can combine it with uh, data that we observe, and then we we modify or we update our belief in light of our observation, and then we have our posterior belief. So meaning prior is before, then we have our data, then we update our prior knowledge and we get to our posterior, right? Prior is before and posterior is after, okay? So then we do use this prior, sorry, posterior belief, which is a combination of the prior plus the also data, okay? So that is the idea behind the Bayesian statistic, right? We have a combination of, so, Okay, how our uh, prior and uh, our data. So, how do we actually express a prior knowledge? Okay, so there's a few ways or few um, yeah, there's a few methods to actually express a prior. So that's why we're going we're going to cover that later in our course. Okay, so but the aim here is we have to express our prior knowledge in terms of uh, distribution or prob probability. Okay, we cannot just know, uh, oh, I think this so, 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 no. Because we have to combine it with our data. So we have to have express our prior knowledge in terms of property or model or distribution. Okay, so which is different from, uh, different from uh, the usual things that we do, right? So if you remember, what we learn in our usual statistic, right? We always say that, oh, our X or data X is a random variable because it's a, so we as we define our data X as a random variable, right? And we always define our parameters theta as a unknown part constant. Okay, so our theta here is actually not a random variable. So theta is a constant value, but we, we don't know the value of theta, but X is our, um, random variable, uh, no random sample. So that is the usual thing that we do uh, in this so-called frequencies method, right? Okay, but in the way uh, for the uh, Bayesian, right? Actually in Bayesian, they say that the data is actually a fixed and not random and everything else is, is actually a random variable. So everything else means, you no, know, we have parameters, we have missing data, we have unobserved feature events. Those are actually treated as a random variable. While our data Y or X in this case, right? Y, I mean, you can use Y or X. The data Y or X is actually considered to be non-random. Okay, so it's the other way around, right? Similar to you know, the usual statistic, we still want to model the variability and uncertainty. We want to estimate the unknown parameters. So in this case, our unknown parameters is you know, the theta, whatever. We want to test hypothesis, make decision, and we want to make prediction. So they are actually all similar to what we do usually. It's just how we do it is a bit different than normal. Okay, the difference is in the framework or the method that we use or the assumption that we use to achieve all this um, objective, okay? So that is the idea behind the Bayesian and um, you know, a very short one, we'll go, we'll go into that later, right? Okay, so for the first part, I'm going to have a review, okay? So the review part, so this is, uh, some of the okay, there are some parts which are more important than the others, right? So the first part is actually very important because we're going to use a lot of this: the join, the marginal, and the conditional distribution. Okay, so if you look at the definition of the join PDF, right? So we have, for example, 
if you have more than one, more than one the variable, so x one, x and y, so we have to join PDF, right? And then the marginal is only the if you have to integrate over uh, one of the variables. So example, if y, then you have to integrate over x. Okay, and it must be a density. Okay, density means it will uh, in integrate to one. This y, not this thing, but this y will integrate to one. That will be a proper density, right? And this is also, this is the important thing. We're going to use this a lot, which is the conditional distribution. Okay, meaning that if y given x, y is conditional condition on x. Okay, so you have y given x, y condition of x, then it's just a joint PDF divided by x. Okay, and this conditional distribution is still a proper PDF. Okay, so we're going to use this a lot later, right? And so you should know that you now if you want to find the condition of y given x, then it should be the joint divided by x here. So x is the x here is at the bottom. Okay, not the y. So don't mistake that because you know, sometimes even these people get uh, did wrong. Okay, so this is the basic one. Okay. Right, so if you have more than one y, for example, y1 to yn, right, so you can do the same thing. Okay, so you can uh, see um, on your own, right, so you have more than y1 to y6, for example, then you can um, you have to find the co combine. For example, if you have six, uh, six uh, y1 to y6, so you have to find the join for, for example, one, three, four, five. So you have to integrate for, for example, two and six. And then if you have to find three and five, then you have to integrate the rest. Okay, then you find the marginal or the join for each of the four and two variables. Okay, right. So this is the factorization theorem. Okay, so okay, this in the review part actually, this is the thing that we actually do in the normal statistic, not the Bayesian. Huh? This one is just for the the thing that we covered in the usual statistic. Okay, and if you have factorization theorem, then if the y is independent, then you just multiply the joint PDF. Or the joint density, I just you just multiplied each of the PDF of the y i, right? So you get get the joint PDF. Okay, so this one is uh especially useful, right? Because if you assume them to be independent, then you don't have to find a very complicated PDF and you just multiply each because they are assumed to be independent. Okay, right, so that is also uh, something that we use. Okay, and this is also you know, Bayesian, right? It's, it must be something to do with your Bayes theorem. Okay, and again, this is something we're going to use a lot, which is, is the Bayes theorem. And the uh, Bayes theorem is, uh, is actually using the conditional uh, PDF. Right, so you can see over here, right? Then you can have, if they have conditional of X given Y, so you have the join of x and y, and then you have y. So y is at the bottom. Okay. But the thing here is, um, you can see this is a join y, right? The join y, right? So means that if you want to find the join one, you can actually multiply the conditional, multiply by the marginal. Okay. So if x given y, you multiply by y, or you have y given x, multiply by x. Okay, so this is because um, if you want to find both of the conditional of x given y or y given x, you have to find the join of the x y first, and then you divide either by y or by x. Okay, so to get back to get back your join PDF, you can multiply the conditional multiply by the corresponding marginal. Okay, so this is the idea means that if you don't know the join PDF of x and y. You can actually find, or you can actually, um, maybe not find, but you can actually uh, sort of, yeah, find the, the join of PDF of X and Y by finding the conditional multiplied by the marginal. 
Okay, so this is a way, one of the ways. So, because sometimes you don't know the join, you only know one of these, or you, you only know this, right? The conditional and the marginal. So, you can actually find back the conditional by multiplying the uh, conditional multiplied by the marginal. We just take note, right? The marginal is the one at the bottom, right? Which is you now y multiplied by y, and then you have here, if, if you if given x, you multiply by x. Okay, and if you have the law of total probability, means that if you get this, this is what is this? This is actually your your joint PDF, right? If you get your conditional multiplied by your marginal, this is actually your joint PDF, and if you call, if you inter, integrate over x, then you get your marginal of y. Okay, so this is very useful. You can see later, right? Because whenever we do this, means that you don't have to find the joint PDF directly. You can use the conditional, multiply by the marginal, and then you can approximate. Okay, or it's not approximate; it's uh, proportional. Okay, you can find the proportional value of the probability, right? Except of the exact probability, right? So that is okay. So this this uh, this is the base theorem is very important. So this is one of, of the important parts, right? So the exponential. Okay, this one I'm not going to um discuss too much, right? This point might we might use a bit later, right? But so you can have a look. It's not just an exponential family of distribution, right? And uh, we also uh, we are also going to use a transformation, some of the transformation here. Okay, we, we use the Jacobian, right? So you should uh, know how to find the transformation of a random variable. So we're going to use also use this later. Okay, a, a bit actually. Right, and okay. So this is again something which is useful, which is the expectation. Okay, so Later, when we find the, uh, when you want to find posterior, right, we always find the posterior distribution, okay, or you have the prior distribution. So they are always, we are only going to obtain only the distribution, okay. So the idea here is we can actually, um, to, okay, to summarize the distribution, right, usually what people do is they find the mean and variance. That's why this is where this, this, uh, this, formula or this uh, theorem here is important, is useful actually. Okay, so if we have y is an variable, okay, this is the one that we have usually, right, our PDF, we have formula theta, then if we integrate y, py, then we actually get the, the expectation of y. Okay, and we can get the variance of y by using the formula. Okay, this is where it gets uh, long, right? So you can actually find the mean and variance of y by also using the conditional PDF, okay? Or conditional mean and variance. So this means that if I would, if I know the conditional mean of y given x, if I integrate over x, then I can get the expectation of mean of y. The same with the variance uh, of y, I use uh, expectation of the variance and the variance of the expectation of the conditional of y given x. Okay, so we are also going to use this later, these uh, identities, right? Um, and this is, sometimes is what is useful is, for example, right, if you were to know the mean and variance, Right, and you can use the identities without integrating over the PDF. Right, so that will not make your work lesser. Okay, so we will probably use a bit of that also uh, later. Okay, right. So the inference, okay, so this is the classical, right, the non vision one, right? So if you have a random sample, okay, here is non vision So the random sample of y1 to yn, right? So if you have an independent, you have, sorry, you have ID, which is independent, identically distributed random variable. So the 
join PDF if you if you if, if you just multiply each of the marginal PDF multiplied by n times. Okay, and they have the same PDF because they are identically distributed, right? So it means that they have the same distribution. Okay, so you multiply because they are independent. So this is why you can multiply like this. One I, I from one to n because they are independent. So the joint PDF is you just multiply the single PDF n times, right? And okay, and because they are identically distributed, means they have the same PDF. Then it just you have the same PDF, but it's just you change from y one, y two to y n. Okay, so here means that so this is easy way for you to find the joint PDF of the data, right? Because you just have multiplied the single PDF of the data n times, uh, because they have the ID which is independent and identically distributed. Okay, and take note for the this case when you have the data or you have the um, PDF for y, we assume that you no. Know, uh, we have theta is a fixed unknown value of uh, theta. Okay, so we this why say we say y is uh, your random sample and your theta is unknown by a fixed value. All right, so this is a classical one. So okay, so this is the PDF, right? So for example, if you have normal, right? You can see over here. This is the PDF for each normal. You have y. I. So if you have multiply by n times, you just multiply by n, the same PDF part is yi, then you can actually, uh, you have to actually um, simplify it. Okay. So here, what happens here is we want to find the likelihood function. So likelihood function is actually a proportional to your um, joint PDF. Okay, so likelihood is equal to your um, joint PDF, but it's actually, you can, you can see it's actually proportional here. Right, proportional. Because here you can see, right, y to theta is actually your data, but likelihood is actually theta given y, so actually this is a function of theta, right? So it's proportional because, it, for example, right, if you take the pre, this joint PDF of the normal, this one, right? So you can see that if you have here, then you have a constant here, right? The constant here, so if you use proportionality here, so anything which is not theta, actually you can uh, simplify. So you have, this thing is a uh, constant, so you take it out, so you have proportional here, right? And if you open this uh, summation also, you have this one, this one, this one, right? But because, okay, so you, that's why you have to take note of your how you write your conditional, right? So if you have y given theta, so y is your data and theta is your constant. So you can see from here, right? Okay, and so this one is actually a proper PDF, right? So you must integrate to one. So you cannot you cannot throw out anything here. So this is actually a joint PDF or it should be a proper PDF, right? But if you have a likelihood function, so it's a function of theta given y. Okay, so here this likelihood actually, it, so it's a function of theta given y. So that's why if you use proportional, then you can actually get rid of anything which is constant. So this is a constant, but theta given y. So we assume here your theta is your main thing, your y is a constant. So anything without theta, actually you can get rid. Right, for, so this why you can get this is constant, you can get rid of it. And then if you open the summation here, right, so this one is y, this one is your theta, this one is your theta. So this one is also you can get rid of it because there's no theta here. Right, so you can actually simplify it into this form. Right, so you can see um, because theta, okay, so this one, you, okay, just take note, this one you cannot simplify because theta minus yi. Okay, so y, okay. Um, so why can you why can you actually get rid of yi? It's not because it's a multiply, because it's a constant, because you have exponential, right? So if you have exponential, uh, so it's a constant because you have exponential a, right, times exponential b, and exponential c, something like that, right? 
So this one is actually exponential a. This part because it says exponential function, so it's actually a constant here, multiplied by a constant. Like similar to this one, right? This one is also a constant multiplied by something. So that's why you can actually because proportional means you have a constant multiplied by your function. Okay, so you can get rid of a constant if it's multiplied, not because it's a sum. Okay, so in this case, it's exponential a plus exponential b for exponential summation times exponential two theta something. Then you can uh, exponential of this yi, you can uh, get rid of it because it's a constant. But here, when you have exponential two theta sum of yi, you cannot get rid of yi because this one is multiplied by theta inside the exponential. Okay, so when you have the when you have the when you do this, you have to be careful, right? Don't like over over simplify. Okay, you can only because it's proportional, so it's only multiply constant multiplied by function. So the constant multiplied that one you can simplify. Okay, so um, why why okay why do we do this? Okay, one thing is um later when you do your uh, algorithm whatever it's actually easier because you only you can simplify your function and you can use a simpler function okay and but also later you can see that if you do this sometimes if you if you simplify and you do something then you can actually get uh, a form of a uh, distribution which is known so it's like it's kind of a treat right treat of the treat for the bcn course Okay, so anyway, so if you have a normal, uh, sorry, this is a joint normal PDF, then you should see that this is, uh, okay, this is also called something called a kernel. Okay, kernel means like, you know, the, the main point, the main point of the PDF that you can, you should be able to recognize, right? So for example, if you see this one, which is like theta y bar, theta square, this is actually a kernel of a joint normal. Join, join PDF of a normal actually. Okay, and you, if you see later, right, if you do something like this and you manipulate it, then you can actually recognize the kernel of a, some distribution. So you can say, oh, this is actually normal. Oh, this is actually gamma or so on. So, again, okay, it's a trick. You know, in the Bayesian, you have to recognize the kernel of a distribution so that you, know, uh, you, can, uh, you can identify the distribution. Okay, because when you, you if you can identify the distribution as a non distribution, however, they have the algorithm to actually generate the values. So you don't have to do the harder simulation method. Okay, right. Okay, so, okay, one thing, why do we do this, right? So, because likelihood of theta is a function of theta, right? So we can ignore all the terms not include theta. Okay. Including y, you, that's why the sum of y you can also get rid. And because the likelihood is not a PDF, so that's why we don't you do not need to integrate to one. Right? For, but for the joint PDF PY, that one we cannot get rid of because that one need to integrate to one because it's a proper PDF. Okay, likelihood function is not a PDF. Okay, and sometimes um, also, it's actually easier to use the log likelihood instead of the likelihood, right? So, so this one, especially when you use the simulation later, right? So, if you use the log likelihood, then you just log the likelihood function, log it, and then you only get this uh, part without the exponential. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, okay, sufficient statistic. Okay, I'm not going to cover it, but... We might use a bit of this later also. Okay. So if when we go, when we actually go um, use it, then I'll, I'll cover it a bit. So this is just for your knowledge. Right. Also the same with exponential family because it's something to do with the exponent, uh, with the sufficient statistic. Okay. And the MLE is sometimes something which is uh, used a lot. In uh, in the normal inference, right? So the maximum maximum like estimation means that you want to find the estimate, for example, theta head, which actually maximizes the likelihood, which is your l theta. Okay, and you now this is how you find the MLE. Uh, 
Okay, again, not going to cover this. Right, what is this? Yeah, oh yeah, we also have the formula for the feature information metrics. Uh, this, we also might use a bit of this later when you do the estimation. Okay, so basically what I'm giving you in this review is a bit of, bit of pieces of the background of the theory needed, right, uh, for this course. We're going to use them, but not all the time. Okay, maybe some here, some there, right? So um, when we going to, when we use them, then I will refer to it. Okay, but this is uh, only for you to be aware, right? That this is the sort of things that you need to uh, know or at least be aware of. Okay, right? And so anyway, and for if you have a confidence interval, so if for example a normal, then you can use this formula. Okay, so wait, what's the end actually? Oh, okay, right. So this is just a fun, this is just a statement about the coefficient interval. Okay, right. Okay, so okay, I'm not going to cover that. Okay, so the important part, right? As I said before, uh, so you can you can look have a look over the review, right, to see what things of set of things that you need to know. But the most important part would be this part, right, which is the join marginal and conditional distribution. So you really need, need to know because this is the basic. You can see later, right, we, if you, when you start the course, we all, we're already going to use this. Okay. Including also the base theorem, of course. Right, so we also have the Bayes theorem. Okay, so this one is the part we're going to use um, the expression with. I think it's a comment. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, maybe I, I have a, I'll have a look. I think, yeah, maybe, I think, expectation, you mean the feature? Oh yeah, I think so. Okay, I, I have a, I'll check that. Because I actually copied this, so. I uh, I check what about the feature information. I think yeah, it should be expectation, right? Okay, I'll check that again later about the feature, and I'll update the notes. Okay, wait. Um. Oh. no, I think this is just a notation. I think the feature one. Okay, anyway, I'll check about that. Okay, right. Uh, it could be the notation only. I use the different notation. Uh, okay, and okay, going back. Right, so this is part, right? This is a part. Yeah, you need to be know. This, you might, we might need later when you do the prior part, the transformation. Yeah, so that's why you're going to do use bit and pieces of here and there, actually. But the main part that you need to know is, of, yeah, the base theorem is also the conditional, the join and the marginal. Okay, this is the main part that uh, you have to know uh, when doing this course. Okay, so any question? At least, I guess, this point, right? I think, okay, so this is just a review. So we haven't, haven't actually used them. So you might not know, um, might not know uh, what to ask. <laughs> okay, but I think after we actually use them, then uh, you will actually see um, what is the connection, right? Um, by the way, for this part of the, uh, for this review, right, you can look over it and you can see the, the uh, the theories needed actually okay wait uh, all right wow okay it's a sorry it is a very heavy rain suddenly <laughs> okay yeah we uh, maybe i need to close 
my window. Okay, um, all right. So this is actually something that I've shared on Spectrum also. This is a list of the PDF. Okay. So meaning that I, mean, I don't expect you to memorize, right, the PDF, but you need to know the the features or one of the special things about the PDF, right? Okay, it's too small, All right? Uh, let me make it larger. Okay. Right, so this is one or more of the some of the common, more common uh, distribution that we're going to use in this course, right? So for example, binomial, no, you have the discrete one and we also have the continuous one. Okay, so when you're doing um, when you're using the distribution, the important part here is actually to see because okay, first is the point here is you have to recognize the distribution. Right. First, of course, you have to use it, but you also have to recognize distribution. So you need to know the key points, right, of the distribution. For so first, of course, if it's discrete or continuous, right. So if you put your i, for example, here your i here is zero one two n or zero one two zero one two. So obviously, it's not continuous. It's a discrete distribution. Okay. So don't give me like beta or whatever because it's discrete. It should be binomial, geometric, Poisson. All right, could be hypergeometric and so on. Okay, so it's not, so make sure that the notation, um, so the state space, the state space of your variable, is it discrete or continuous? Okay, okay, so why do I emphasize on this a lot? Because, uh, you know, I've taught this course a few times already and student always make some mistake about this, right? If it's discrete or continuous, if it's discrete, it cannot have a continuous distribution. Or if it's continuous, don't give it a discrete distribution. So if your x is 0, 1, 2, it's a discrete, you cannot say it's a beta, it has a beta distribution. Okay. So just be aware of that. Okay. And also the parameter, right? Because you have the parameter for each of the um, distribution, right? So it should be, and of course, the range of, of course, the range, also the range of the values, for example, p is probability, right? Okay, and uh, if you look here, um, remember that I told you there's a kernel, right? The kernel is something related to the uh, parameter. Okay, for example, if you have binomial and p, p is your parameter, then you can see here the this the kernel will be like px, 1 minus p. So anything involving, involving the p would be uh, the kernel. Okay, or if you have poison, it's lambda. Then you'll be lambda x exponential lambda minus lambda. Okay, that will be the kernel of the density. Okay, and uh, right. So if, for example, you have the uh, continuous, right? Okay, so what the continuous people also make mistake is, uh, as I said before, you have to look at the state space. So for beta, you can see that beta is between x is between zero and one. Okay. So if your x is from 0 to infinity, your x cannot have a beta distribution. All right? So here x is uh, from 0 to 1 for beta. And then exponential and chi-square are all positive, bigger than 0. OK? So if it's uh, this form, right? So when you, want, okay, when you have a posterior, so one of the uh, outcome or course outcome that you need to know is given the posterior, you need to recognize the distribution of the posterior distribution uh, of the posterior of the parameter. Okay, this is where I say you need to have the skill. Look at the kernel, or is this a beta or is this gamma, whatever, right? So first step here is the state space, right? X beta is x from zero to one. Okay, so if it's bigger than uh, x from zero to infinity, cannot have beta distribution. So we also have exponential. Now we have chi square. And uh, I think the common one would be gamma, right? So also from zero to infinity, inverse gamma, normal, right? And then we have T distribution and uniform. Okay. So again, if your S is from zero to infinity, it cannot have a, a normal distribution because normal is x is from minus infinity to infinity. So normal can have a negative value. Gamma and uh, chi-square exponential can only have a positive value, x. Okay, so, so 
uh, when recognizing or when identifying the distribution, you also have to identify the um, the space space of the uh, your X, right? Uh, and then so you have to be aware that if the space is like this, so you cannot have this distribution. Okay, so it might be uh, you no know, seem simple, but actually this is going to be the key point. Okay, uh, key point of when you, when you want to identify the distribution. Okay, so I'm just uh, sharing this in the beginning, right? Because uh, I see students make the same mistake uh, before. Okay, so you, you might think, oh, it's a small thing. Huh? I don't, because I don't need to remember. I don't need to. Okay, you don't need to. You don't need to memorize the PDF, yes. Okay, so this, this, this sheet, whatever, right? This, uh, this PDF. Uh, paper or info paper, right? Yeah, it's going to be available, right? It's also Google, whatever. So the PDF, you don't have to memorize, it, of course, right? Because I don't expect you to memorize the PDF. Okay, even the even if you have a face-to-face -face exam, usually I will give you this paper, right? Because I don't expect you to memorize the PDF for each distribution. But even with this paper given, students still make the same error. Okay, so that's why um, I just telling you, I mean, sharing you from the beginning, right? Uh, so one is you need to look at the kernel, right? Kernel means the, the body of the PDF, but you also need to look at the state space of the X, okay? Or the data, right? So if your data cannot have that, uh, that uh, range, then you cannot have that distribution. Uh, so it's just you now um uh, it's just uh, something to share okay right okay i need to i have to stop recording